Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at arms, not these big hairy ones, but these carbon fiber ones. These are from, well, this one is from the ZMR250, and I've got quite a collection of them, and a lot of them are broken, but you can see there's a lot of inconsistency. This is one form of the carbon fiber. Here's another form. Notice how the twill patterns are different in those two. And then there's fiberglass ones, and there's glassy carbon, and all sorts of different types of uh, carbon or arms for the ZMR250 and they all suffer from one problem they're weak as bird poo they really are uh, people you know, I know the ZMR250 fanboys say oh no they're perfectly fine I've never broken one but the honest fact is that they break they break here you've seen my other video where they break here because the stress rises of these slots and this narrowing of the arm itself here just make it very very weak very vulnerable in that point regardless of the material that's used so as I said in my video on how the, these things break. A new design is necessary. Now, um, I've got, excuse me while I reach over here and grab the piece of paper, I've got some arms and they're from Thug Frames, Thug Frames in the UK. And let's just take a look. Let's just do a comparison, get rid of this one. Look at the comparison between those arms. There is no comparison. Look at the, in fact, I'll put this one on top so we can see even better what the difference is. Now, you'll notice immediately that the the thug arms are much, much wider. There's a huge difference in width. Um, and more material generally means more strength. Also notice there's no unnecessary narrowing of the arms like there is here. See these sharp, tight radius curves, bends here? These are where the stress rises occur. Now this one, lots of meat all the way through and lots of meat around the slots for the motor screws. That is brilliant. Now, of course, these are both three millimeter arms, but thug arms also make a much thicker arm, five millimeters if you want thick arms. Um, he's labeled the bags as Team Nana and Team Thug. This is the th Team Nana arms. I'm gonna use these because as we all know, I fly like a Nana, but still managed to break these damn things. Um, I'm retrofitting my ZMR250 with these Thug Team Nana arms and we'll see how it gets on. So here's my totally retrofitted ZMR250. As you can see, I've got the Team Thug or the, the Thug Frame arms on that baby. They are just so much stronger than we had before. Now, one of the, one of the problems I had with this frame before was that the old arms were getting a bit soft and I've spoken about that. I'm sure there's some kind of delamination process takes place on here. So you end up with these arms being torsionally less rigid than they were when you first put them on. Now, these arms are super torsionally rigid because of the extra material in there and the quality of the carbon seems really good. So I'm going to take it out and see because one of the problems I was having with the ZMR was this vibration when you hit a certain rpm with these flexi arms the old flexi arms at a certain vibration it would actually start knocking the flight controller around the pearl nays couldn't cope with the vibration and one of the symptoms was that anything would just pitch right up you know pitch way up like that and, and almost start going backwards in rate mode and in self-leveling mode so the gyros i think we've taken a hammering with all the vibration so if this is better then we shouldn't see that pitch up it should fly like it used to fly when i put the first put the original arms on before they got knocked around, beaten up and twisted and delaminated. So what we have to do now, of course, is just take the damn thing out and fly it.
So there we go, actually that flew a lot better than it has done for some time. Now the motors on this, these are the RC Timer 1806 motors, they're pretty worn. And there's a little bit of vertical movement in some of the motors. You can actually see there's actually probably about mm, three quarters of a millimetre, maybe more vertical movement in some of these motors, which causes that rattling, buzzing noise that you hear. It's not good, but I mean these motors have had a hell of a long life. And you know, they've uh, encountered a lot of ground in their time. So yeah, um, what I did know though was that there wasn't any of that sudden pitching up and the whole thing seemed to handle so much better with these arms on. So I think it points to the fact that the old arms were just too flexy, too much vibration and it was knocking the flight controller around. So yeah, I'm happy with these thug frame arms, even the Team Nano ones are three millimeters. Obviously the five millimeter ones would be <laughs> pretty much indestructible. Uh, I will continue to attempt to break these arms in future flights and I'll keep you up to date with what happens. I think what we're going to find now on the ZMR is that these, these vertical pillars are too thin and they're too narrow, not enough thread space for the bolts. So retrofitting those pillars might be the next step to keep to make the ZMR 250 a really tank-like machine in terms of its robustness. Now I'm going to be using the ZMR 250 as the basis for the low-cost my first mini quad build video. So you'll be able to sort of buy your frame, work along with me, I'll show you how to put all the bits in, show you which bits to use, which bits to buy, if you want to keep the price down without sacrificing too much in the wire quality, and I'll show you how to set it up, and I'll show you how to fly it. So it'll be the blind, you'll hear the tapping of white canes as the blind lead the blind, and I'll show you how to fly a mini quad. But there you go. Um, if you've got questions, comments on these arms, now I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to where you can get these arms. And I mentioned earlier, I do have some other arms. Now, the guy that sent me the other arms said he's working on version two of those arms, so I thought it's probably not fair to, uh, to compare his version 1 to these. Um, I think he's sending me some version 2s which have better material, stronger carbon and so forth. So uh, when those arrive I will compare them to these. In the meantime, um, you know, you can get these. These are available I think online now. You can get the 3mm or the 5mm, whichever takes your fancy. So yeah, it's a good product. Give it a thumbs up. It's certainly going to make a big difference to the robustness of my ZMR, probably yours as well. So there you go. Questions, comments in the section below the video, kindly provided by YouTube. In the meantime, thank you for watching and now it's time for me to get back to the bench.